Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode. What up cat? Hello dad. Ryan. The uh, connection is is uh, I think is pretty steady. Hopefully it stays. Uh, if it starts getting weird, let me know. Uh, hello everyone. Wow, a lot of people today. Welcome. Alpha, Spags, Ono, Erie, Miguel, JC, Rudak, Stacy, Nick. I'll be coming back to, for Emerald City Comic Con again, hoping there will be a Defy show again that same weekend. I'd love to come back to uh, Emerald City. I'd love that. That's awesome, Christopher. Comic Tropes wants to know if we're going to hear about Japan's from Japan. Yes, definitely. Oh, well, that's out of tune. And I don't have a tuner on me. I should probably order a tuner. Except I have a million tuners and I just lose them all. So. But, what are you going to do? Uh. Uh. <laughs> My dad wants to hear about the lattes. Guys, let me tell you, those lattes in Japan, no joke. No joke. Happy cows. Tastes like happy cows. Something that we do not have here in the States. If you want happy cows in the States, you gotta pay buku bucks. Uh, it's very sad, but true. Capitalism in its finest. Uh, I do love America, but hey, we got our problems. Uh... Let's get right into it. Uh, I wanted to talk today about Japan, and uh, I uh, I had an amazing time. I was very nervous to leave, and uh, <laughs> I really I really did have a great time though. It was really special. Got to spend some time with some great friends. Got to hang out with the Felix Comic Art crew. Uh, I had some other friends that were not comic related that came with me. Uh, but let's get right to it. Uh, I have here. Let me just adjust my camera here. This is the sketchbook that I brought with me. I try and bring a sketchbook to all of the outside of the U.S. trips that I take. Uh, usually, when I uh, do a travel sketchbook, I get to like maybe like right here. Like I don't really, I'm not able to fill the sketchbook, unfortunately, which is kind of sad. Uh, but you know, I I didn't have my kids with me. I didn't have my wife with me. Uh, it was just me and. Uh, I can tell my friends, hey, I'm going to sketch this. You can go wherever you want to go. Uh, you know, but, uh, oh, here, hold on, sorry. This is a little bit, that's better. Uh, you know, you can go where you want to go. I'm going to sit here and sketch this. Can't necessarily do that with family, but you can do it with close friends. So, uh, this is the Japan sketchbook, and I just thought I would go through this, and then while I'm going into this, I'd also feature some stuff that I got. So uh, without further ado, I did cover up my phone number, but uh, this is my house uh, that's in uh, Chicago, and Fiona did the background, and it's awesome, and uh, I love it, uh, and I drew right over it, and I was feeling really homesick. I have a tendency to draw a little bit uh, before I travel to get a sketchbook like primed, so uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it makes me like feel a little more comfortable in my own sketchbook skin uh, if I just kind of get ready before I actually get on the plane. Uh, I primed this canvas here, uh, so this is like acrylic wash, and uh, sorry, I'm still recovering from a 
I've never really had a cold, but I've got these like sinus thing and I'm like sniffly, so I apologize for the gross sounds that I'm making. You may hear more of them. <clears throat> Here is uh, a building that was in uh, Tayo City, which is a little bit north east of like Tokyo Center. It's still in Tokyo proper, but uh, not like in the center. And uh, I actually did this towards the end of the trip. I took a picture of this building that I loved and I sketched it later. Uh, I primed this before I left with acrylic gouache, you know, just to kind of get the page ready, just in case I saw something cool with a blue sky background. Sure enough, it took the right uh, building that I didn't see until like way later. Here's some, uh, I used, uh, where is it? This is just an old ballpoint pen and some Signo, uh, a Signo Uni ball. Uh, I actually, I th feel like maybe I drew this on the plane home from the photograph, but I can't quite remember. Uh, here's a Valentine's Day heart that my daughter Fiona made me. And of course, I had to draw a Gundam. I did this before I left as well. I was just kind of had travel anxiety, so I drew a Gundam. This is a, uh, this is from Shinjuku Station. This is the uh, Tokyo subway. Most subways in Tokyo, and all over really, have a stamp that identifies them. So you can go to like the main section of the train station and about 90% of all train stations have like a little stamp that you can like uh, put in a travel journal or a sketchbook or like a piece of paper, whatever. Super cool. Uh, like crazy cool. It gave us an excuse to visit some places or stop in some places if we didn't really have anywhere to go just to see what the stamp was like. Uh, it was super fun. I got a lot of them. And uh, I was that obnoxious tourist asking all of the train people, Stampu? Uh, and uh, yeah, but they, people were very nice, very kind, and very patient. Uh, here we go. Here's me again, travel anxiety. Uh, I don't like leaving my family for a long time. Uh, and I did leave my family for a long time. So I sketched Rachel telling me it's going to be fine in the little... TV screen on the back of my United flight. Uh, what can I say? I am a nervous wreck when it comes to flying overseas and leaving my family behind. I'm sure I'm not alone in that. It is what it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I do like this drawing. And this is also a nice excuse to watercolor. You know, I don't do a ton of watercoloring when I'm not uh, traveling or not working full time in comics because I'm so busy. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the chat. and I see your questions. I, can, I, I have trouble switching from, like, chat to, like, point of uh, thinking about and, like, talking about things. So I'll do my best. Uh, here, so I'm just, like, getting my swatches ready. I don't have my uh, watercolors on me, but I got my, uh, my Daniel Smith watercolor set out ready to go. Uh, I did some, like, uh, sketching, uh, while I was, like, actually there, just hanging out, waiting for stuff, uh, got a lot of great food, Ebimaru ramen, uh, I believe this is lobster ramen, uh, but it was a lobster ramen place, uh, absolutely incredible, this is my first meal off the plane from Japan, I landed around 5.45, got to my hotel about... 7.30, maybe 7.15 in uh, Jimbocho, the used bookstore district in uh, Tokyo. And I love that there is a used bookstore district, period, like in a city. And sure enough, there are hundreds of, not hundreds, hundreds of thousands of used books, but like tons, tons of used bookstores all over everywhere you turn in Jimbocho. And they've also got great food in Jimbocho, like this lobster ramen place. Uh, Kristen... Daniel Smith is the best watercolor choice. I love them. Uh, they are the most expensive. What can I say? It pays to buy the best brand when it comes to watercolor because it's Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith, you should pay me and give me free watercolors because I'm talking good stuff about your brand. The end. Here's, uh, so this is my first night. The next day I, I had some fluffy pancakes and it was in a tall building. So uh, I had to wait a little bit. And so I drew some tall buildings in Japan looking down. Uh, I do try and be good about sketching things that don't really matter, like the edge of a subway train seat. 
Uh, this is like a really nice shape here that I just really liked. Uh, this is on my way to Koenji to go see uh, Japan Book Hunter. I've covered this because this is some concept art for the new sci-fi book that I don't want to share with people yet. Uh, you know, YouTube is a wild jungle. A lot of people watch later on that don't uh, partake in the chat. As much as I wish sometimes that this was a private place that we could, I could show you everything that I'm working on, that is not a possibility. So sorry, I have covered part of this. One of the big reasons that I went to Japan was to get some influence and inspiration for uh, the next sci-fi book that I'm working on. You know it's been a labor of love. We've talked about it a lot here. Uh, I'm tr still trying to figure out a way to share more with the people that want to know more without, you know, giving away my... I, I, it's not like I really think anybody's going to steal it, but I'm really excited about this one. And I want to make sure when it debuts that people stay excited and it doesn't feel old hat before it even comes out. Uh, Spags, to get the juices flowing? Indeed. Uh, yes. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, this... <laughs> So one thing I like to do is I like to, uh, when I'm traveling, I will draw myself oftentimes. I have been working out, so I did give myself a bit of a puffy chest here, and I'm not sorry about it. I am not ashamed. You know, we're all guilty as cartoonists making ourselves look a little sexier than normal, but hit, I've earned it, okay? Uh, maybe my stomach should be a little bigger, but this chest is accurate. <laughs> sorry, just have to say that. This is uh, from Village Vanguard in Mandarake. Uh, I, this is uh, during my trip to Koenji, which is a little bit west of, of the Tokyo City Center. Uh, it is, I still think, in Tokyo proper, but I'm not sure. Uh, Sean from Japan Book Hunter uh, was there. He has a office slash studio of a bunch of rare manga, some crazy awesome stuff, an incredible curated collection of stuff for sale and of his own personal collection that he showed me a ton of. Uh, and it was a blast. He took me to Village Vanguard to look for some books that are that are coming out now, that are available now in bookstores that he didn't necessarily have in stock. And uh, this is also very close to the Mandarake, Mandarake at Nakano Broadway, uh, which I found one really cool book, which I will show you soon. Uh, <laughs> speaking into existence, look, I'm I am not, uh, I am not by any means like good at like bodybuilding or whatever but i am trying i'm trying to be healthy and i'm trying to gain a little bit of mass i'm working on it because i'm not good at physical stuff i'm good at sitting on my butt and drawing a lot uh you know i ran a marathon in 2011 and it felt really good to be in shape and then since 2011 it's been a slow decline uh so i'm trying to work my way up not necessarily to run, run a marathon but maybe to look a little better in the family photos every year with that said, let's kind of go over what I got at Village Vanguard and Mandarake really fast. So I have, you can't see it right now, but there's a huge, huge stack of books over here. I'm probably not going to be able to get through all of it, but I will do my best. So uh, let's see. Ugh. Let's go over the thing I got at Mandarake. So this was made known to me by Sean. Uh, this is Malaya. So uh, full disclosure... There is some adult-oriented stuff in these books, so I don't think there's anything that will like, get me kicked off YouTube. But if you do have kids watching, please warning. This is probably like PG-13R, I think. Uh, yeah, there's some people naked in here. I want to be respectful to people who are watching with their kids. But uh, this is by uh, Yoshikazu Yasuhiku, which from uh, uh, you may know him from Gundam The Origin. He does not have a ton of stuff translated in America. This included Malaya. It is beautiful. It is like, like he draws great ladies and I, my main character in this new book that I'm working on does feature many women. Uh, sorry, I gotta make sure that everything's appropriate. Yeah, here we go. So like this panel right here, I think this is awesome. One thing I love about Yasuhiko's stuff is it seems effortless. He's not sweating or it doesn't seem like he's sweating. He's getting the story told. He's doing it in a well, ex a well done, exciting fashion, and it's more that I kind of more stuff that I want to soak up. Because without Gundam: The Origin, I think I've said it before, I don't think that I would be doing Transformers because I, I I never really thought about approaching robotic 
uh, things in comics in such an organic way was possible until I really saw Gun in the Origin. So I'm hoping that that continues on with Malaya here uh, with like sexy warrior princesses, which is a vibe that I'm kind of going for. So uh, I got this at the Mandaraki because uh, Sean did not have any in stock at the time. This is a pretty rare, I guess. It wasn't that expensive when I found it, but super exciting. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm going to try and make another pile of stuff that I have shown you. One thing that Sean told me about was a book called... This is coming out now. This book is called... Sorry. Evil. Or Evil. So I can't read Japanese. Uh, and, you know, it's... I do love... Uh, I do love the, the manga style with like the big eyes, but here is a, you know, Japanese artist that is kind of taking things in a different direction. Uh, you'll notice like this is not really the traditional like big eyes, uh, big emotions that we're kind of used to when it comes to manga. I think that this art is absolutely beautiful. It kind of makes me think of like a little bit of all red, a little bit of like a little bit of like love and rockets a tiny bit and it's like pretty crazy like there's a lot of use of like really intense blacks there's not a ton of tones here if any at all uh like this is really nice here that that panel uh again i can't read uh japanese but i do love the art style and i'm always looking for stuff that's different and, oh, this is really nice. This also doesn't look super photo referenced. Of course, I'm sure it could be, but this feels very organic to me, whereas a lot of, you know, modern day manga backgrounds look like they are just kind of copied and pasted from a computer. Ooh, that's really great. Isn't this gorgeous? It's just super fun to look at. It's satisfying. It has kind of this, like, squish, which you don't see a lot in manga, uh, at least modern day manga. It's very American, yes, Jay. Uh, so maybe <laughs> I like it because it's American, but it, it, it's not completely American. It has kind of a different style. Uh, thank you, Atsushi Kaneko. Thank you, Kristen. Sorry, I wish I could remember all these guys' names, and I wish I could read Japanese, but I can't. All I can do is very messily try and show you how excited I am about this new stuff. Uh, let's go to the next thing. Oh, let's bring out the... Uh, well, shoot, I, where's my sketchbook? Sorry, everyone. Oh, buried under books. Oh, and here's uh, the back of the sketchbook also. Uh, if there's one thing Japan's really good at, it's stickers, man. Uh, this is from Mandarake. This is from the book off, the 7-Eleven. We all know about the 7-Elevens, I'm sure. If you don't, when you go to Japan, just walk into a 7-Eleven and buy the egg salad sandwich. That's all I'm going to say. You, the, your mouth and taste buds will tell you the rest of the story. I liked going around. A lot of times they have these like little skinny stickers that they'll use to like tape your bags shut when they put your stuff in bags. And they're just very well designed and very satisfying. And I was that guy who was asking for stickers to put on the back of my sketchbook. And they're all like, basically like, this is basically to prove you bought this. Why are you asking for more stickers? I'm like, I promise I'm not stealing anything. I just want to put it on the back of the sketchbook. Let's get back to it. Here we've got uh, some more like... Uh, some more receipts. I like drawing over receipts. I am weird like that. Uh, this is a Jimbocho Station sticker. Look at this. Look how pretty this sticker is. It's a little dry, uh, but it's just so nice. Really, really love that. Uh, just drawing some noodles here, because uh, as one does, another Jimbocho Station. This is my buddy John, who traveled with me for most of the trip. Uh, not in comic. Not in comics. He loves comics, but he's just a very old friend from Chicago. That doesn't live in Chicago anymore. He met up with me in Japan and we hung out and it was amazing. Another Jimbocho Station uh, stamp. Uh, Dad, I'll get to Kyoto in a second. All right, you're killing me. All right, we're going in order here. Uh, this has another character design that I don't want to give away, but this is based off of a a uh, uh, a 
building I saw in Ginza that I thought was really awesome and it's going to be the basis for one of the locations of um, uh, this new comic book series. This has nothing to do with anything except I do love drawing cool cars. There was a Nissan Hyperforce on display in Ginza that I definitely took a picture of and drew later. Uh, yeah, super, super cool. And, you know, good excuse to fill up the sketchbook. Uh, here is a uh, uh, kind of fisheye perspective of me, uh, of like my, the spot, the location I was at, which was uh, Budagumi. It's a uh, tonkatsu place in uh, Tokyo. And it was incredible. Uh, here is my buddy Maynard looking at his phone. You'll probably recognize this character. I'm just kind of, you know, another trying trying to get used to it. Since I was drawing a bunch of this character in the sketchbook because of uh, how much this trip was kind of been influencing me. Uh, the Sugamo Station here. Here's another Mandarake. I didn't buy that much many toys. I, I bought maybe one Gundam. Uh, but I did get a few more books at Mandarake. Uh right next to the Shinjuku station, which I accidentally put upside down. Uh, and uh, here's a, a Gundam from Gundam Eighth MS Team over the, uh, who knows how long this receipt's gonna last. It's probably gonna like evaporate in two years, but uh, yeah, yeah, this is, I really like this drawing a lot. Speaking of this Mandarake, I know where I, I know what I got at this Mandarake. I'm not a huge fan of these uh, Gundam art books because a lot of times it's just kind of like old rehashed images. But I took a chance on this one because it is the 8th MS team uh, like art of or like behind the scenes book. So there's some scale stuff in here, some like promotional materials that didn't necessarily get seen. It's a bunch of background stills. Sorry, it's really glossy. Uh, a bunch of like breakdowns of all the different weapons and I would love to do a Gundam 8th MS Team fan comic at some point so this is kind of necessary buying like it just like breaks everything down and you know how I hate using Google images uh, yeah all the characters some more like screenshots yeah really cool stuff my favorite anime probably of all time like anime series, and uh, definitely my favorite Gundam series of all time. Let's see if there's some... Uh... Yeah, I got a few like pencil sketches, which I really like seeing. Like the unfinished stuff. It's, it's really, really cool. Let's zoom in on that a little. How neat is that? Some like concept art. I think there... Yep, there's some uh, storyboards in here, like very poorly scanned pencil storyboards but it's still cool to see for a series that you know brought me so much inspiration a lot of words that i cannot read definitely a worthy purchase and the uh the the book wrap definitely got smushed a little bit on the plane ride home sorry chief rocker that would be awesome I would say if you're a fan of the 8th MS team that this is a worthy purchase, though. So, that's another thing that was uh, tough about uh, book hunting in Japan, you know, which I knew going in, but all of these books are wrapped completely in plastic. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to be going up asking to open plastic books up. So, uh, yeah, it's just like kind of <laughs> guessing some of the times. One awesome thing, though, about uh, Japan Book Hunter is Sean's books, all of them are open and you are free to look through. I was free to look through every book uh, and just kind of peruse, and it was amazing. So thank you again, Sean, for uh, the Japan Book Hunter experience. Speaking of Japan Book Hunter, he found me some really cool manga. Did you guys know that Ikigami did a... Uh, sci-fi book it's called nebula kid how cool is this i mean i'm all about sci-fi and i'm all about ikigami doing sci-fi like that is gorgeous the, t the pages are all yellowed this is old this is seemingly a underwear shot of a princess lady 
Sure. Again, disclaimer. Let me make sure this is okay. Oh, this is cool. This is so awesome. Full disclosure, I have not had time to even go through all the books I got, so some of this is new for me too. This is beautiful. Uh, there are si six volumes of this, I think. And they were found for me by Sean at Japan Book Hunter, and I picked them up there. Thank you so much. I walked out of his studio with like 30 pounds worth of books. I had red marks on my hands when I got back to my hotel because it like was just like the books were like the bag was digging into my hands so much. Let me show you one more thing that I got from Japan Book Hunter. You probably know this title from uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe. I did get a copy of Ryu. Uh, this is by an artist named Kaze Shinobu. He is awesome. Super cool stuff. I love this design. I can't believe he drew this a million times. Amazing, Kaze. Uh, absolutely incredible. There is a scene here where he punches a wall by accident and just basically punches a building down. And there he is, super tiny. I'm totally going to steal this. I'm going to have a character get thrown into a wall or something. Maybe like a wrestling move. Something over the top. Yeah, you know it. It's coming. Thank you for the inspiration, Kaze Shinobu. Very excited about this. This presentation, it's so chunky and perfect. All right. Let's go back to the sketchbook. Kristen asks, did you get another suitcase or did you have to ship all your books home? I had to buy a suitcase. <laughs> I had to buy a suitcase there. I felt terrible. I felt like really materialistic and like, oh man, am I buying too much stuff? And then I said, no, no, I'm not. You know why? This is my job. And like it or not, I've looked at a lot of stuff in American comic book stores and there's still stuff to find there. I'm not saying that that's not true, but there is some inspiration to be had in things that either are not made anymore or I've never heard before that are in a different country in like different language from different artists. You know, a lot of the books that I bought are like from the seventies, uh, eighties, like stuff that I've just never heard of before. And it's not like I can Google this stuff. I can't Google it. I can't find it. It's hard to like, I stumbled into so many treasures while I was there just by sheer luck. It's like a whole new adventure, and I'm not going to apologize for buying another suitcase. I'm just not. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm yelling at myself. I'm yelling at that little voice inside, which is like t telling me to be ashamed. And This is my job. I have to be inspired at all times. So, you know, let's keep going. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Okay. Oh, so here is a drawing of uh, Koeke no Lekai. Leke, Leke? Uh, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it very well. This is the best bowl of ramen that I've ever had. Hands down. There's just no other way to describe it. The best bowl of ramen I've ever had. It was tonkatsu based. Uh, there wasn't a huge chunk of like pork in there. Just like a really thin, thin slice that actually looked more like deli meat than anything else. Some raw onions on top. I, it was like a religious experience. I was elevated to another plane. There's just no other way to describe it. It was that good. And uh, I went there twice. This is the first time, and I went back. Uh, this is a good time. Just two guys rocking and rolling. And, you know, very small space. Uh, yeah. A special special time I had to draw it here is the uh, stamp for the Sengoku station this is a really cool logo I don't know much about old cameras uh, but how cool is that logo kind of makes me think of like old Star Wars vibes I tried to draw the camera and it looks terrible but I did try oh here we go, guys. Here was my trip to Todokan. Todo, to, to, so, uh, the wrestling shop that you see in Do a Powerbomb. Uh, 
that the characters go into to go into the next the different dimension to go wrestle in the Death Life tournament. That is a uh, the Tutacon store. You probably recognize if you know uh, do a power bomb, you'll recognize this logo. Uh, I went there, and uh, it was amazing. Uh, it was like everything that I hoped for. It was so cool. There was so much cool stuff there. I bought like a bunch of like New Japan tape that was in like the twenty five cent bin. Uh, I bought like an old postcard from the uh, G1 Climax 27, which has one of my favorite matches of all time. Kenny Omega versus uh, uh, Kenny Omega versus Tetsuya Naito. Uh, here's a drawing. After I bought all of the stuff that I bought, uh, I went to the shopkeeper. There was a few people there, but I gave them a copy of Do a Power Bomb, and I showed them the picture, and they seemed very excited, and they took a picture, and uh, I actually, hold on, hold on, everyone, I have something to show you. It's the biggest purchase that I made in all of Japan. I did not need it. Now, this is something I did not need. This is something that doesn't necessarily bring me inspiration. This is just a celebration. I'll be right back. I bought an official Liger mask. I have wanted one basically since I became a fan of Jushin Thunder Liger. This was like 28, 2018, late 2018. Uh, look, it was Thank You Liger, the little mini comic that I made that uh, made me decide whether I wanted to do a wrestling comic or not. And uh, it's a big thanks to this guy. So he is now up in my living room. Uh, this is not worn by Liger, but it is made by his official mask maker, the guy who actually made his masks. He still makes masks uh, for people who want to buy them, and it is incredible. This thing is so cool. <laughs> uh, I would love to wear this. Someone asked if I wore it on my flight home. I did not wear this. Uh, there's no way for like me to fit like my glasses in here. I cannot see anything without my glasses, and I hate contacts. And my beard would like probably pop out the mouth this thing is incredible uh what's up dude i don't know huge inspiration thank you liger uh thank you so much for everything and uh you know i'll remember this for a very long time i'll never get rid of this this will be with me till the day i die uh and you know it's like i don't know it's just a big deal thank you liger okay where do we put you Awesome. Okay, so going back, I had to draw a liger, you know, to celebrate the occasion and celebrate my time at Tunicon. So I saved the receipt. I did a little drawing of a liger and did a little drawing of me. This looks like they're giving it to me. It doesn't look like I'm giving it to them, but I did give it to them. And I made sure to buy everything first because I made the mistake of doing sketches for a bartender my last time in Japan in 2015 uh, without paying first and they just gave me a bunch of free drinks and it was super awkward and it was there they felt obligated and i felt terrible i was just trying to be nice so there you go <laughs> uh oh here's a uh drawing of stephen green uh this was uh he was on the train i believe Here's my kids that I drew. Uh, just a bunch of like random places I stopped. Here's a toy store in Ginza that I stopped at. Uh, this is a book off. Pro tip, if you go to a book offs like outside of Tokyo, a lot of times they'll have used manga there that uh, doesn't have stickers or doesn't have wrappers around it. Uh, so you can flip through stuff. I also was able to go to a uh, professional wrestling show at a uh, Ryugoku Sumo Hall. I got to see a wrestler retire. We went to go see a DDT show. I don't know DDT super well, but Kanosuke Takeshita was there. That was really great. Uh, you know, uh, I saved the 
the the uh, the ticket. One funny thing, my friend bought the tickets for us because he spe he reads Japanese pretty well, but he didn't actually buy enough tickets, and we thought that we had two boxes reserved, and we were kicked out of the show halfway through. <laughs> uh, so uh, we were we were only apparently our tickets were only for only one box, which we did not know. We felt bad. It, everybody was very uh, uh, kind and sweet, but very awkward and not understanding English or to actually kick us out in a way that was, you know, didn't cause a scene. We were just like, oh, we have the tickets. Here you go. Because we had two tickets for, that we thought were for two boxes. And uh, they're like, oh, this is for only one box. But they were saying that in Japanese. We all had to leave. <laughs> then they found a person who spoke a little English and we were able to explain ourselves. And she was very kind. She's like, only only one of you can stay. I was like, that's fine. You know, I'll go. And she's like, well, you don't have to leave. You just have to buy another ticket somewhere else, uh, like sitting somewhere else. I was like, yeah, let's do that. No problem. So it all worked out in the end. But my goodness, that was very awkward. Felt very bad. I'm sorry. Very sorry, Ryo Goku Sumo Hall, for the awkward uh, interaction. Uh, what can I say? Nothing, cannot, couldn't be helped. Uh, here is a beautiful coffee shop that we had coffee every, like every morning across the street from our hotel in Jimocho. This is Kanda Coffee. Uh, again, the lattes, the coffee, incredible. So good. Uh, not much more to say. An incredible time. This composition is not very good, but I was trying to capture a moment. Uh, right on Spellbox. Yeah, it was at a sumo hall, so there were no seats. They're just like these little boxes that two people can sit in. There was four of us, and there was a box like here and a box right in front that took up like that was in, there were two rows in between. So we're like, oh, it must be these two boxes. So we sat in both and. <laughs> Two hours into the show, a guy with a business suit came in and he was just starting to talk to us in Japanese and something was wrong and it went on from there. Uh, here's some more, few sketches. Uh, and here we have the uh, bullet train. Uh, here's uh, Tokyo to Osaka. Got to spend some time in Osaka as well. Got to stamp one of the bullet train stamps. That was really cool. I really like this drawing of the bullet train. I had to do it very fast. I'm not sure why I think I thought that the bullet train was going to take more time than it actually did. It's quite fast. It is the bullet train. And uh, yeah, I love these like little, they're shiny. You can see the, the JR logo. So cool. Here's another shot. I did this on the train of the outside of that tonkatsu place I was talking about before. There's my buddy John. I would like to ink this at some point. I have not gotten around to it, but hopefully I'll do it soon. Uh, but it was also, also kind of nice as a pencil sketch. Uh, here is another copy uh, outside of another coffee shop in Osaka. Incredible coffee. Root coffee in Osaka. If you're ever in Osaka, check it out. Very sweet owner. Uh, yeah, great, great coffee. Great latte. <laughs> I'm a nice latte kind of guy. I did have a really nice interaction with a lady on the train, an, an older lady. I was just drawing uh, one of my characters. I wasn't drawing anybody on the train or anything. She just peeked over my shoulder and she started talking to me in Japanese. And she seemed to like the drawing and we were talking a little bit back and forth in broken English. So I did start to draw her and uh, she was a little embarrassed, but I don't think uncomfortably so. And we had a really nice interaction. Uh, this was in Osaka. That was a good time. I'm not anywhere good at katakana, or my kanji is not very good, but I am trying. If so, here's some practices in line. Uh, here is outside of a place where we got fish cakes in Osaka. Uh, really good food. I, it's weird. I wouldn't ordinarily go to a place that features fish cakes, but this place is good. I'd go back. Another shot of my character from the sci-fi book. You all know. If you know, you know. Uh, here is uh, Kiyomizu Temple. This is uh, not a very good drawing. Uh, I just there's like it was so detailed. The uh, this is in Kyoto. Uh, it was just hard to get a correct drawing. I wanted it to be better. I'm a little frustrated by this one, if I'm totally honest. Uh, yeah, I did have a lot of Japanese students from all over Japan who were there on like trips come and say how cool it was. 
a lot of strangers took a picture of this very bad drawing. So, is what it is. Another uh, stamp, of course. Here's another shot of uh, Kiyomizu Temple. I really like this drawing. I had just FaceTimed my family here, uh, like in this area, and uh, I was missing them very badly. And I channeled it. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I just drew the crap out of this scene. Uh, here's another little shot of the temple with like multiple columns and intersecting pillars. Really cool. Another stamp. Um, here is just a uh, berserk drawing that I did at a cafe in Kobe, uh, kind of recovering from our trip to Osaka. Uh, uh, it's that the berserker armor is really hard to draw. The end. Uh, and here is our uh, some time, more time in Kyoto. This is a shrine. Yasui, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that shrine. This is a breakup shrine, I guess. That's what was told to me. This is where you go when you need to break up with somebody. Uh, so, I didn't know that when I was drawing it, but then I learned after. Kyoto is beautiful. An incredible time. Very peaceful. One of my favorite places for sure. I think next time I visit Japan, I will probably go straight from Tokyo just to Kyoto. And, uh, yeah. Because I just love Kyoto so much. Some more, uh, train tickets. Uh, uh, we got a beefcake. At a Kobe beef place uh, by accident. It was literally a cake uh, made out of beef that we cooked ourselves. Uh, it was a hilarious. I don't know if I'd order it again. Uh, some more stuff from uh, Kyoto. There's a very bad drawing of my character for the new sci-fi book. Here's some Okonomiyaki and some uh, stamps from... Oh, geez. Hiroshima, sorry. Hold on. Oh, wow. We have a lot to go. And we are at 614. We may have to do a part two because my family is getting very impatient. When I went to go get the Liger mask, my wife gave me a look that I'll never forget. It might be time. It might be time to sign off soon. Sorry, guys. Um, let's take a pause on this sketchbook, and I'll show you a few more things that I got in Japan before signing off. And we will do a volume two. I'll be back next week, and we'll just continue the same conversation. Because this, I'm so proud of this. I think this looks really cool. This makes me really happy just to share. And I want to take my time with it. I don't want to rush through. And I'd like to continue to show what I got, because I think it's very inspirational for me, and hopefully for you, too. So let's just... Go highlight a few more things that I purchased in Japan, and uh, we'll save the rest for next week. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. I found this at a book off in uh, Osaka. This is my favorite helicopter. It is my mission to have a transformer in Transformers turn into this helicopter. Spoiler alert. Look at how many cool pictures. I love the AH-1 Cobra. It's been my favorite helicopter since I was a little kid. I know that these are made for... Uh, well, I don't know. It's tough. I love this helicopter. It is a weapon of war, and I, I'm not... I'm not... I don't know. Sometimes I feel bad for liking industrial design made for, like, killing people. So that's kind of real. That's a real thought that I have sometimes. Sorry if I'm bringing it down. But man, this thing is beautiful. It just is. So uh, this is just a really cool... This was not cheap, too. This was like 12 bucks. Uh, well, I guess not not expensive. But uh, I used to, at Book Off, like spending like $3. Super cool. And uh, I want to draw more of these. So uh, I bought this. Okay, that's that. Uh let me highlight one more uh, really cool thing. Here is what I believe is a World War I manga by Yasuhiku, again. Uh, just seemingly effortless, effortless lines. 
Uh, this guy kind of reminds me of a little bit of a Simon Roy. What, or, you know, Simon Roy reminds me of Yasuhiko, I should say. Uh, it just has just a, a, a quality of just like, a bree there's a breeziness to both of their lines. That is so freaking amazing. It's so gestural. It's so perfect. <sighs> I didn't know this existed either. This is an incredible manga. I don't know if there's more volumes. If there is, please let me know. Uh, oh, Danny, I do love the Apache, but it just it doesn't hold a candle to the AH one. Sorry. This is an incredible book. I don't even know what it's called. I can't read anything on here. Uh, so great. Yasuhiko. An incredible talent. I have to go. I'm so sorry. I totally miss calculated our time uh i know that i didn't get i know this has only been like a 45 minute stream that's my fault every minute i go past six o'clock uh the, my relationship with my family worsens it's time for me to go i'm not going to move this stack of books right here uh we're going to keep going over this next week i'm going to keep going into my sketchbook we're going to keep going it's going to be a good time and thank you so much for being here. Being, being here. Okay, I really do have to go. Uh, this has been awesome. You guys are all amazing. Okay, I have to go. I have to go. You're the best. You're the best. We'll pick it up later. Like you said, sorry I didn't get to any comments or questions. We'll have a big Q&A about this next week. I promise. I promise. Peace.